And joining me now from the other side of the aisle, Democratic Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. He's also a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator B Booker, welcome back to Meet the Press. Uh, obviously, there's another topic I would like to discuss with you in more detail, but I want to ask you about the reaction, um, uh, your reaction to President Biden's decision on the balloon. Um, how, how has he handled this, and should he have acted sooner? Well, clearly there's a lot of information that still has to come out, but... The president and the United States military did what they did that is, in my opinion, very just and very uh, defensible. They saw that to blow that thing up or to take that thing down over land would cause challenges. And we know from the debris field over the ocean that it was miles long. I think I heard seven miles long. And so the president himself said, I ordered it to be taken down. The military made a thoughtful decision, and I trust the United States military. Would you have uh, canceled that trip to Beijing uh, like Secretary uh, Blinken did? Was that the right well, call? I, I wanna, I, I, well, I want to make one more point about this. Uh, I, I think what is – it's problematic when uh, for Democrat or Republican have one standard for one president and another standard for another president. Mm -hmm. We should remember that this is now known to have happened under the Trump administration multiple times. And so to create another standard for Biden, when Trump, it seems, allowed this to go over the United States, is just uh, a, a bit hypocritical. Uh, we are in a position where we have a global contest going on. Chinese espionage, not just against potentially our country as a whole, but also companies, uh, Chinese activities right now with Taiwan. This is a time we need to unite on both sides of the aisle, not engage in partisanship, but do some of the good works we have done in the last Congress, like the CHIPS Act, which is a national security bill that helped us to make sure that should there be incursions against Taiwan, we're ready as a country. This is the time for us to unite and find strategies to counter Chinese espionage and their other um, ill activities around the globe. Uh, how concerned are you about a retaliation from China? They seem to leave it out there in their statement. Um, again, we should be concerned about China as a whole. And the difference between us and China is that we are... Uh, a democracy, and we have great alliances, and not just NATO, not just Canada and uh, Mexico, but there are free countries all around this world that understand that China is a threat. They're not playing by the rules of the world order. America is the strongest nation on the planet Earth, but when it comes to us uniting with our allies to counter Chinese aggression, mm -hmm. uh, it is it, it, a power that is multiplied. It is really important to understand. I remember when uh, uh, President Trump put sanctions on China. He also put, used a national security waiver to put the same sanctions, to put similar sanctions on Canada. Uh, we don't need to be pushing our neighbors away. We right. need to be uniting in a front of democracies to create a more rational world order uh, that has a lot more power in controlling Chinese aggression. Do we need to have a posture in our military preparedness and in the Armed Services Committee? Are you going to be supporting whatever it takes to prepare for war with China over Taiwan? Do we need to do more to prepare for that potential, even if we are going to work our, do everything we can to prevent that outcome? You know, again, I'm, I'm very aware that the United States military prepares for a lot of eventualities. Uh, I'm also a believer that the strong diplomacy uh, can work to counter Chinese aggression. And so, again, this rush or a drumbeat to war is really problematic to me when there are a whole bunch of other options. And this is where I give a lot of confidence and strength to the Biden administration. You asked me the question about Blinken's trip. Uh, this is an administration from its very beginning uh, has been reaching out across the aisle and finding good ways to counter and check uh, China's uh, 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 aggressions, China's espionage, but also to look, way, look at ways to strengthen ties with China right. uh, that enable us to better keep them at the table. So again, a balanced approach is necessary. But so is working in, in, in contingencies. I've traveled around the world from mm -hmm. India to Germany and having really substantive conversations about how we strengthen our democratic alliances uh, to counter aggression from uh, uh, dictators or totalitarian regimes from Russia yeah. to North Korea and indeed also uh, China. Let me pivot to police reform. Uh, and I want to sort of get a realistic check from you about what's possible. Presidential campaigns start pretty quickly. Senator Tim Scott is somebody who may run for president. Um, he has said the George Floyd Justice Policing Act is a non-starter. So what's realistic this calendar year of what could get done um, given national politics and, and, and where we are in America? 
You know, I, I think that there are a lot of folks across the aisle that understand that this is a moral moment. America is seeing more and more uh, because of body cameras and other technology. We are seeing uh, the, the horror of unarmed people, handcuffed people in the case of the tragic murder of Tyree Nichols. We're seeing things that do not comport with our national standards and expectations. And we are a nation right now that should set the global standard for professionalism policing, and we are falling short of that to the horror of more and more Americans. Mm -hmm. And so I know that this might not be the, a divided Congress. I'm very sobered about the reality to get a large comprehensive bill done. Uh, but I have been in conversations uh, all week with people on both sides of the Capitol and both sides of the aisle with police leaders, national police leaders, yeah. national police union leaders, uh, as well as civil rights activists that all want to get something done that could advance the cause of uh, not just police reform, but raising standards, creating yeah. more transparency and more accountability. So I, I'm not giving up in this work and I'm having constructive conversations with people on the other side of the aisle. Look, uh, you know, sometimes we let the perfect become the enemy of the good. You guys were close. You, Tim Scott, Karen Bass. Um, there was an agreement on banning chokeholds, except in life-threatening situations. There was an agreement to set federal standards for no-knock warrants. And there was an agreement to limit the transfer of some military equipment to local departments. Can we just pass that and then go back and try to see what's next? I mean, can we, are we in that situation where we can do this? You know, there were nine civil rights acts, right? You know, can we do this in, in iteration? Yeah, it's exactly the way we approached the gun safety legislation on our side, led by Chris Murphy. And I was happy to be a part of that and get substantive things in that bill, like community violence intervention. It was not everything we wanted, like universal background checks or assault weapons ban, uh, but it was a significant step forward. We are looking at this bill uh, or the potential to get legislation through, but it has to meet those standards of raising uh, professional standards, transparency, more accountability. Um, and again, we, we are working on things. I'm not... I'm sobered about the belief that we can get a big, comprehensive bill done. But can we get something done? Yeah. I believe we can. I'm putting all my effort into that right now. I mean, look, I, I, I take it the idea of dealing with qualified immunity is probably not something that happens with this round of police reform. You know, look, you, when you hear encouraging things, I, I've met with Lindsey Graham last week. True. When you hear encouraging things from people like him, it gives me the sense that we could do something possibly in the Senate. But remember, passing a bill in the Senate, as we found out with immigration reform about 10 years ago, yep. doesn't mean it'll pass in the House. Uh, I want to get something to the president's desk that will make Americans safer, uh, that will give more confidence in American policing and more transparency and accountability when things go wrong or to stop things from going wrong. And that's right. the goal here. And we've got uh, the Senate negotiations, and this is why I'm working in such strong partnership with the Congressional Black Caucus and other people in the House of Representatives to try to make sure we can get something all the way to the president's desk. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.